I am so glad to be reporting something much more positive at this season opener than last year's season opener against Utah State. Now, before I say anything, Utah State taking Auburn into that, almost beating Auburn at home, I don't know what they're feeding the guys over at Utah State, but they like to play the spoiler over there. Heck, even I was cheering for Utah State. I mean, all those who schedule Utah State, beware. But tonight, we're here to talk about OU, and when I look at this team, after watching this game tonight, I see nothing but promise and potential. I am so, so very excited about this team, guys. Even the young talent alone is just fantastic, but the Oklahoma Sooners defeat the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, probably offensively the best Conference USA team, a solid team, 47-14. to And the score doesn't even do us justice to the control we executed in this game. We constantly executed control over Tulsa. At no point did this game ever get out of our hands. Not once. So many things firing on offense. And this is such a balanced offensive attack out of Oklahoma that I have ever seen in years. I mean, our wide receivers, of course, but also our running backs, tight ends. Heck, even our fullback can catch the ball. We executed all three running backs on our depth chart. If it, if it was Brennan Clay or Roy Finch lining up, or Dominique Whaley lining up, well, we'd, then we'd have Roy Finch over here as a slot wide receiver. We executed so much on offense. It is just absolutely incredible. And I love this offensive line, this offensive line of upperclassmen giving Landry all the time in the world he needs to throw the ball. But the greatest thing about this is Landry has so many weapons to get the ball off to that he doesn't need that much time to get it off. If I'm Landry Jones snapping the ball coming back, I'm thinking to myself, oh gee, what do I do? Do I hand it off to the running backs? Do I throw it to this running back as a slot wide receiver? Do I throw it to my wide receivers? Do I throw it to my tight ends? Do I throw it to the fullback? Hmm, decisions, decisions, decisions. And I've got time to make a grilled cheese sandwich behind this offensive line. I am really excited about this team offensively. Really, just really excited. But i got to give the game ball to one person. Dominique Whaley. 131 yards on 18 carries. Four rushing touchdowns. This guy's a walk-on. I was not expecting this at all. And I don't think any other Sooner fans were expecting this either. I mean, I was sold on Roy Finch, Brennan Clay, as those were the guys of the running backs. And while Brennan Clay proved that he can be a power back and get us those yards when necessary, Roy Finch was pretty quiet tonight. But Dominique Whaley, get this kid a scholarship. He's a walk-on from Langston University. And not only did he get four rushing touchdowns, but he accomplished those rushing touchdowns, one of them making four Tulsa defenders miss, just bounce right off and weaving in and out of them, punching through goal line stands to get deep into that end zone. I'm, I, I don't know if it's too soon to say if I'm jumping on the Dominique Whaley gravy train yet, but I'm definitely a member of his fan club from here on out. And I really like how we faced Tulsa, because was Tulsa able to execute plays on us? Yes, yes they were, and I'm very glad that we got to face a team of this skill level. Now, of course, I'm putting all this into perspective, and I'll get into more of that later. But G.J. Kinney, i got to give props to him. He was exactly the prolific quarterback that I knew he would be. He can burn you on the run, he can burn you on the pass, and he's a big guy, obviously. David King went out to try to tackle him, and G.J. just knocked him right over. <laughs> but... Um, he was clearly Tulsa's one bright spot on offense with his top wide receiver down. He was pretty much the offense. Now, I'm not saying he was the only guy doing stuff. Brian Burnham did a great job also on offense. I give props to him. Um, I was really happy to see this defense, to see what they would do against a quarterback like that, against a passing attack, but also a rushing quarterback. And there were bright spots like Jamel Fleming completely breaking up the pass, the ball popping up in the air, and one of our defensive guys, Frank Alexander, just catching the ball and running. The big guy just running. I was really excited. There were bright spots, but there were also things that clearly need to happen. Things with Aaron Colvern and Javon Harris things, plays that they were burned on, and I'm very glad to know that these, some of the younger guys on this defense, they saw what happened, they saw what needs to happen from here on out, and they can adjust, because we've got a pretty early bye week coming up, we got 
a weekend of rest, and then we go on to Tallahassee and Florida State. Now, personally, I don't think we're going to see another physical quarterback like G.J. Kinney for the rest of the season. I don't buy into E.J. Manuel. I don't. Because I watched that game, and he got pretty shaken up getting smacked around by a defender from University of Louisiana Monroe. I hate to break this to you, E.J., our defensive guys are a heck of a lot bigger and stronger than that. So I don't buy into your physical. I don't buy into your physicality. Prove me wrong if you so choose. But talking about this Oklahoma game, I also want to give props to another guy on defense for Tulsa. I had to um, I had to look up his name because I couldn't quite remember. Cornelius uh, Arnick, I hope I pronounced that right. He made some really great stops on that defense. He he played his he played his guts out. And Tulsa always fought with Moxie and Spunk. Give it up to them. Give it up to Trey Franks, so the running back at Tulsa. He burned us a couple times. He's really talented also. And I was just really excited to see Tom Ward, our middle linebacker, wearing uh, Austin Box's jersey as a tribute to him, the moment of silence for him. I was excited to see the Austin Box uh, decals on the back of all the helmets. Just winning this season opener for him is going to set the tone for the rest of the season. And what I saw from this team tonight was potential. I saw weapons. And I am really, really excited about these weapons. Now, granted, we have to put all of this into perspective. Because not every, because from here on out, the teams we face aren't going to rely on their quarterbacks to, to be their offense. They don't need their quarterbacks to be their entire offense because they've got other weapons too. We're not going to be at home. The defenses we face are going to be better. The offensive lines we face are going to be better. The offenses we face are going to be better. So this has to be treated with some perspective. But also, we're glad to have the win, glad to have a convincing win um, we're just really happy with this one. I much rather prefer this season opener compared to last year's season opener. Um, guys, I'm really excited about these weapons. I've got really, really good feelings about this team now that I've seen them in action. But that's seeing them in Norman. And we all know about OU playing at home. We turn into gods. But after what I saw playing against Oklahoma State and playing against Nebraska and playing against the UConn at the end of last season... I don't fear away games, and I don't think these guys do either. But now we've got a week to rest. Uh, this is probably the earliest bye week I've ever seen OU take on. But those are the keys I took away from this game. Really excited. Really excited. Again, OU wins 47-14 over the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Uh, Tulsa, I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. I hope you guys take the Conference USA again. Uh, you guys are a really talented team. I, I give it up to you for never giving up for not one second. So that's all I got to say, guys. Boomer Sooner, raw Oklahoma, fight for OKU. And rest in peace, Austin Box. This first win was for you. Let's keep going to the rest of the season.